I just want to see how much more Wang Hedi can do. Hello, you're watching Avenue X, where junky and good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Tang Lan Jue, Love Between Fairy and Devil, is a 36 episodes web drama that's being aired on the platform iQIYI right now. The drama is directed by the director of a couple of years ago a very popular drama, and I'm still waiting for the second season. Da Song Shang Nian Zhi. Young Blood. The drama is based on a novel written by Jiu Lu Feixiang, who is the same author of another IP, Yu Feng Xing, that is being made right now with Zhao Ling and Lin Gengxin leading it, Legend of Shen Li. It was first published as a book back in 2015. As for the drama itself, it is produced by iQIYI plus a company called Hengxin Yin Li. Its previous better known productions include we Are All Alone and This project was green-lighted quite a long time ago at the end of 2020 and they didn't go into production until Valentine's Day last year and wrapped around June. And then it take them more than a year to deal with all the post-production. And if you've watched the drama, it's actually very reasonable that it takes that much time because this drama has some of the best special effects of Xianxia genre I've seen. This drama is led by Yu Shuxin, Wang Hedi, also featuring Zhang Linghe, Xu Haiqiao, Guo Xiaoting. At the point of making this video, I've watched the first 18 episodes. Based on what I've seen so far, I'll give it a two good line straight. Honestly, this is the only Xianxia I've seen in 2022 that made me feel this genre up. maybe it's not fully completely 100% dead. Let me first talk about things I don't think is ideal for this drama and as a warning <laughs> if you haven't tested it out and you're worried about if certain things are gonna put you off well I'll tell you first. Number one is this is still a very old-fashioned Xianxia story. In terms of pretty much all the character setup, all the important plot essential story you've seen it somewhere else if we've been living on this planet for more than let's say 10 years. Number two is if you're looking for some groundbreaking aesthetics and design concepts, although I will also put design concept of this drama on the positive end, I would also say it still hasn't jumped out of the kind of standard, almost worked into a system aesthetics of how you portray fantasy world in Chinese dramas. The third thing that may put some people off but wouldn't affect everybody and most people probably don't care about is our male lead and a couple of other important characters <laughs> are still dubbed because Wang Hedi, his own Mandarin isn't gonna work for a proper drama. His full-on Chongqing accent. <laughs> I feel very familiar, okay, because I come from that place, but it's just gonna destroy a drama if he opens his mouth. So these are a couple of things that I would consider as still a minus thing and see if that's gonna stop you from watching the drama. Now, let me tell you why I would actually recommend you check out this drama. If you're only gonna watch one Xianxia of 2022 from Chinese Romland, pick this one. Number one, it has many small points, but I would categorize all I want to say as it has very carefully thought and planned and then executed design of things, which includes color palette, set design, conceptual art, and then get visualized through special effects, different style of different tribes, races in the story, what color they pick, what kind of texture goes into that, their architecture, lighting, and then plus special effects of how people do their magic and how you can visually represent some very complicated conceptual magical power. Even though when I said it hasn't jumped out of the <laughs> standard of using lighter color to represent good and then darker color, bad, flowing hair, you know, long hair like, like what I have right now, particularly for the heavenly realm, all those light fabric, overexposure, a lot of the gentle, almost hazy look of things. It hasn't jumped out of that yet, but comparing it to other dramas you've seen in this genre in recent four or five years, it has the strongest individuality. And I highly appreciate that because I like design things. You know, I'm a kind of designer. Uh, I would like to think of 
myself as. So when I see certain things that clearly has been well planned and coherently worked out, I highly, highly, highly appreciate that. Also, it has a very interesting mixture of Chinese aesthetics with very strong Western fantasy. If you've seen any productions from the West that regards elf, fairies, medieval look, you know, you'll see those elements in design, in everything in this drama. So you can really tell they've put a lot of effort into designing the look, the visual. Also in the special effect department, I've looked at the uh, end credits, they actually hired 13 different special effect companies. Other than the post-production company they use, they picked that many different special effects studios to do their different stuff. So what you end up with is the best special effects of any Xianxia drama you've seen in recent years. Pretty much since I started this channel, it goes into first is how refined and beautiful and layered and textured rendering looks like. The other thing is they really thought carefully about how I could visually represent a quite verbally fantastical, but you don't really know what it should look like. Magic. There are two characters in this drama for one scene. They entered a painting on a boat a traveling and drinking wine and having a good time, but they all look like the two-dimensional brush painting, which is really pretty to look at and haven't seen that really done this well in any other fantasy drama. You would also have our male lead character in one scene pretty early on in the drama who comes to the rescue of our female character and he is the ginormous version of himself. She ends up like a tiny doll on his palm and that almost Buddha and uh, Monkey King visual of the giant person and the tiny person is so well done. And I haven't seen that really being so well articulated visually, texturally, and also conceptually in other fantasy dramas. So this drama in its design department beats the other fantasy dramas quite a few miles. Money. Okay, you can smell money and you know they've put the budget in the right place for the story, thankfully. The second positive point is unlike some other dramas I've rented about in this genre. Even though its story is quite simple, it doesn't have very complicated high concept, its worldview is coherent. All the characters, whether they're very important or very marginal, whichever side they're on or whatever their personal motives are, they all fit into this worldview. Things link and make sense. And you don't know how difficult it is to have that in fantasy dramas these days. I'm more than thankful to the logically coherent worldview and character motivations that I can watch this drama without feeling I'm being insulted intellectually. Third point, definitely have to emphasize and probably is the most important reason and I think for a lot of people who have, as I observed, fallen in love with this drama is great casting choice and actually very good performance. Let's talk about a couple of important roles and their actors and actresses. Yu Shuxing, female lead. I always liked her if you've been with my channel for more than two years. You know that. She's not like the greatest actress out there. And she definitely has a limited range. You cannot expect her to play everything well. But this is her comfort zone. This character is just so in her zone. And she has the naturally very positive bubbly energy, making her super adorable on screen, even though she's not the prettiest out there in the acting world. While I was watching the drama, I just absolutely adored her. I feel like I'm her auntie and I just want to dote on her, although I know she's super rich and there's nothing that I can actually provide her that she couldn't get herself in reality, okay? So for her to play the little orchid flower fairy, no problem at all, enjoying it very much. Then moving on to a couple of other supporting roles, I didn't know actually before I watched this drama that Xu Haichao is also in it because he was in Meng Hualu not so long ago. Now he's in this one as a complicated double-sided character. He looks great in this drama. I think the styling of him in this drama beats pretty much every other thing he's been in. And then he also has quite a few very emotional, intense, extreme close-up, close-up scenes, and he did it so well. Very impressive. Zhang Linghe, he is the Hua Cheng actor of the drama version of Tian Guan Sifu that we do not know if we are ever gonna get to see. And he's been in a couple of other period dramas previously. I've watched some of it. I have to confess, I haven't really been very impressed by his acting previously. I just know he's a really good looking guy. Okay, I have eyes, I can tell. In this drama, his styling, his character, <laughs> it's just 
very, very good. And he's actually a very lovely male second character. Although in contrast to the male lead, he's the weaker one, everything considered, he's not the typically soft, mushy guy who with all those responsibilities and his rankings in his way cannot pursue the female lead bravely. And the classic Ye Hua, almost like a male lead in a lot of fancy dramas, he has the better version written for him, which is when it comes to the final question of are you gonna pursue the woman you love or are you gonna protect her at all costs or are you gonna sacrifice whatever, you know, because you have all the responsibilities. He's like, no, I'm gonna pick the woman. I like, I don't care how much I have to pay for that. And I'm like, Ugh. that's a qualified male second to compete with the male lead. <laughs> if, if he's not like that, there's no point of having that character there. Oh, and also he and Xu Hai Chao's Rose, they're actually a really good friend couple. In a way, I think they should be a CP. Xu Hai Chao's role should give up on his shifu, and then Zhang Linghe's role should give up on the orchid. And these two are gonna be great, because they are already a pair. <laughs> They've lived with each other for tens of thousands of years, and in love with each other for real. Like, they would sacrifice a lot of things for each other, so like, you know, might as well just <laughs> you're, you're heavenly. I guess you don't care about sexual orientation up there. Then we have to talk about the most important thing. And I think the single thing that made me want to continue watching drama is I just want to see how much more Wang Hedi can do. You guys all know how much I've ranted about Mr. Dragon and I'll still stand by that. Oh, Wang Hedi in this drama looks like a different person. Apart from the much better styling of his role in this drama, the good wick, the good look, the black color, the, the beautiful robe that just makes him 10 times better looking than what he looks like in Mr. Dragon. He also learned how to move his face <laughs> naturally in the right moment for the right expression. And he plays some very complicated and unusual scenarios of emotion extremely well. He has changed from minus from negative points from third level down in the basement on my sort of scale of actors being qualified to be actors to he's on the positive end quantum leap of acting he plays this almost classical bad guy male lead who is literally the strongest person in existence so he can go out and do whatever he likes and nobody can stop him, but the story would have it that he gets this weird body swapping and then tie with the female lead and then the female lead can order him to do things that he cannot refuse because of a magic spell. They also had the spell of shared experience and feelings. Whatever the female lead feels, he can feel the same thing. You can see this setup is so typical for a Xianxia drama male lead, where he's made to be this super strong person who can just do anything he likes, but only the female lead is his weakness because he literally cannot destroy her. But it just happens to suit Wang Hedi so well. And he manages to play some of the key moments of this drama, just as audiences would want for a male lead of this setup to do. So that's like the point four, is the story itself, although it's very old-fashioned, everything considered, they just play it so well. They're like, okay, we get this really basic story set up. How can we How can we have this limit of this setup in a very normal story and create some unexpected, delicious, super satisfying and entertaining moments? And I think from script level to the direction level and then to the actors, they all work together to create some of the most funny and ridiculous and super entertaining scenes I've seen in fantasy dramas. For example, the female lead unknowingly has the ability to order the male lead to do anything she wants. If she doesn't retract that statement or that order, he would have to carry it out no matter what. So the scene happened where he's forced to count all the flowers she has in her garden. There's also this super funny scene, okay, later in this drama, where he had this ring that can stop him from feeling the female leads feeling if he wants to. But he took it off for something he did the night before and he forgot to put the ring back on. The next day, he's working properly as the ruler of his realm, having very serious conversation with his subjects about big political issues. And the female lead somewhere else is just being very happy, laughing and smiling like an idiot. And <clears throat> he feels it, he couldn't stop. He starts to laugh, but he tries to control his laughter and smile while he's talking serious business and everybody is confused. 
but only he knows what's going on, and that's it. <laughs> I didn't expect Wang Hedi can pull that off, but he did it so well that ah, as an audience, it's just hundred percent entertainment. The drama at this point has already gotten into this really comfortable running mode. While oiled, it's all running. It just feels so smooth. And every new episode comes in, and it's just a little bit more excitement, a little bit more extra surprise, a little bit more ah, that's what I want. And they gave me from the first release of six episodes on the first day, and gradually leading up to this point, pretty much my watching experience is a steady climb. Slowly falling in love with the acting, with the characters, the story. I just cannot wait to see what happens. Later, I know there's highly torturing moment, and I just can't wait. Oh, I'm so excited, and it reminds me of the steady climb of another drama last year. You know which one it is, hey. And I have no doubt that I'm gonna stick to the end of this drama. It is my most eager to watch drama every day now. That should be the end of this video. My first impression, kind of, of the drama Tang Lan Jie, Love Between Fairy and Devil, and it's definitely a surprise. I'm not yet at the point where I would want to make an edit on it, but it may happen in about. Ten episodes time is gonna be an epic torturing moment of this story. At least that's what I was told. Okay, with the rough outline of the future plot that I heard from here and there, if that moment delivers, okay, if that emotional impact is like big enough, that probably will prompt me to make an edit on it. Who knows? Happy Avenue X will conclude this video here. Thank you for watching, and please take care. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.